Hello guys and uh, today welcome to uh, Laravel 8 crash course and I want to be going uh, very fast because uh, I just I don't want to take a lot of time doing this because it is a crash course meaning that you have to cover a lot of things uh, within uh, one hour or just a packed time so the first thing will be what is Laravel <coughs> you have heard of laravel laravel so but what is what is it so the best uh, the right place to go to find the description of laravel is the website it is website and on the website it says that uh, laravel is a web application framework with expressive elegant syntax and it goes further to say that we've already laid foundation freeing you to create without sweating the small things in this description there's a lot of things that are packed there that you can basically open up and find a lot of things about laravel so meaning that the first thing is expressive and elegant and syntax uh, and then we have where it says that let me just focus on this uh, we've already laid the foundation bring you to create uh, without to create without setting small things the small things so basically what they mean that uh, laravel is like a foundation let's say that you want to create a php application from scratch and you are going to to first structure your application on your own you will determine the structure you want the application to be in and then after that you are going to write the the database logic on your own you are going to write the the, fu the functions that are going to, to 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 work with the database you are going to create uh, maybe your own template or your own theme to use so basically what it's saying that uh, we've laid the foundation o also you have to write the authentication part of your application so that the user can be able to log in and get a token and maybe they say set up the session things so it says that all these things have been done for you so the foundation thing the basic things that are required for for all with almost every application they have already done for you so what you have to do is just to build on top of that basically it is now you have to add the functionality that you need for example, more, almost every application needs uh, to work with the database. Almost every application needs to work with the uh, to, to have the the the, the functionality that d d controls the retrieving and writing data and deleting data and editing data on the database. So and also the authentication. So these things have already been done for you, and what remains is for you to now begin working on top of that and as you can see it is a php framework so it is not you are not be, we will not be writing java code you are not be writing javascript code or uh, ruby code we are going to use php syntax so that means that you have to be familiar with php for you to be able to get started with uh, laravel framework okay so let's look at the requirement after looking about it let's look at the requirement what are the requirements so if you go to the documentation just click on documentation and uh, go to prologue here we have a uh, release and uh, let me just click on get started and we have installation uh, uh, okay but let me not talk about that uh, let me just tell you the requirements so laravel 8 requires at least a uh, php 7.3 i think uh, php at least version 7.3 that is the php version and the next thing that you need you need a uh, you need a database okay you need php you need the database and you need composer basically you need php install php development environment so php and development environment you need the php you need the database and you need the, the, the server okay or 
uh, there are many applications though that you can install in your laptop or in your computer or whatever device that you're using that will help you i said uh, that as a standalone environment you have all these things included and the example of those is like zamp we have WAMP for windows we have lamp for linux we have, uh, we have um, well we have also for mac yeah so how if you you want to to get a, maybe application that is cross-platform they can work on mac can work on uh, linux and can work on windows then you'll consider using a, a exam otherwise you just want to the one for windows i use windows or for mac you can just search for and you're going to get for example windows you have WAMP. Uh, Linux we have LAMP and Mac uh, Mac we have uh, there is a name I just forgot uh, but we also have another one for Mac you can install so in my case I have a ZAMP installed meaning that uh, I am going to use ZAMP okay uh, but whichever the, the, the database or the setup you are using you'll be able to follow up so meaning that you are a PHP developer you have all this uh, set up okay so like on windows i'm using i'll be using windows but you can just uh, copy the same and use it on your, your respective operating system so for example on windows i uh, the zamp folder if you install zamp it will be found in uh, in local disk c uh, i don't know you can install it in any other folder but for me i install in local disk c and then and uh, we have the ZAMP folder and that is the default installation so if you installed ZAMP and use default uh, guidelines uh, you, you you should be having ZAMP folder in the in your C local C or whichever address that is contains your operating system so if I double click on ZAMP you find that uh, it has various directories and uh, or folders okay and then so you are logic don't get concerned with all this you know that your logic is in ht docs and this is where your application will be residing okay so the ht uh, docs directory is where we are going to set up our our project okay so we've talked about uh, about the zamp and the requirements and i also talked about composer you also need composer so what is Composer for? Composer is for a dependency management or package installation. So for example, when you are working on JavaScript project, you are using Node Package Manager, okay? Almost every language as it is a, a package manager. So packages, what are they? For example, you want to install, I, to bring other functionalities on your, on your, on your, in your project and you don't want to write from scratch you look for a package on github and then you can install it in your project and just use that instead of writing it from scratch okay so in php we use composer in node.js we use we use yarn or npm and we have also other languages with their package managers right so enough of talking let's go to uh, how to install it so how do you get started with Laravel? So for you to get started with Laravel, you have to, to install, okay? So if we go to installation, uh, you, you realize that, uh, I will not read this and explain all of them, but there are two types of, uh, there are two ways you can uh, set up a Laravel project. Uh, for you to install, you need a Laravel installer. That is the first one. And another one is just installing directly using Composer. So for you to, to set up a Laravel project using a Laravel installer, you need to install that Laravel installer first, and then you will use it to get a project. So Laravel installer is here, and for you to install it, you'll just do Composer Global Require Laravel uh, Stock Laravel Installer. So let's I have it, but just let's just copy it and go to our terminal you can open terminal from anywhere you want and then you just uh, right click and paste that 
so basically what this is going to do is to install a laravel installer and as the name suggests laravel installer it installs laravel project so after doing that the next thing is to you see there you've not seen a lot of things because I already have Laravel installer and the Laravel installer version is version 4.1 so since I have the Laravel installer for me to set up a new project I'll just have to navigate to to the folder that I want to set up that project and I'm using uh, I'm using uh, the terminal so where I am right now if I do print working directory you'll find that I am in uh, in the C Zamp and ht docs basically i am right now in this folder ht docs and um, i can maybe just create a folder make m make dir mkdr and that folder name i just want to do youtube like that so i want to create a folder called youtube inside the ht docs and that is where i want to set up this project so if i do ls to list all the directories inside the uh, the zamp folder you get this folder that is called youtube and you can move inside that folder by doing cd youtube so these are command line basics so right now we are in the folder called youtube and even if i go to this uh ht docs you'll find that you have this directory created here so i want to set up that project inside that folder and since I have, uh, I have, uh, since I already have the Laravel installer, for me to install a new project, I just do Laravel new and then the project name. So if I want to do a blog, I just do blog like that and hit enter. And the Laravel installer will start uh, downloading all the required packages for Laravel and setting up in a, pro in a directory. So, as you can see, it has already created a directory called blog. And sure enough, if we go to, if we go to, to htdocs and inside YouTube here, we are going to see this uh, folder called blog and it was not there before. So inside this blog is where all the Laravel applications are going to be set up. All the Laravel directories and subdirectories and files are going to be set up as you can see them there well so that is it for for you for laravel installer okay but now that is the first method yeah i was just showing you the methods that we use in installing laravel and that is the first okay so as you can see it will start downloading all those projects that are required but now let me just close this by doing Control c I have just closed that installation by doing control C and I just want to show you another way because I told you that there are two ways of installation. So this other way is where now you use composer. Okay. So let's just scroll down and get to that. Uh, get to that. Where is it? Let me just scroll up here so that you can get the the code how we can install it using i just want to get from here so as you can see here is where you can install using composer let me just copy that and i'm going to explain so the first thing you have to is to delete or uh, let me just use another project name if we were to use the name blog we'll have had to delete the the blog that we, we had created inside the youtube uh, directory but now so this is doing composer create project laravel laravel and example app that is the example of the application you want to create if it is blog you'll do blog if you want to name your project uh, app chat you can name chat you can name in, in the, the name of the project how do you want to call that project okay so if i just call it scratch let me just do scratch like that and if i hit enter it is going to start installing the required uh, the required packages and set up the folder just as you saw the laravel installer uh, doing but now the different thing is that uh, 
the style of installation is different as you can see you'll see you'll see through installation you know, using the terminal that i'm using yeah but basically the, the at the end of it of all these two methods you'll get a laravel application or all the requirement for basic laravel application so that you can begin editing and adding your own uh, uh, your own uh, con controllers functionality database editing those things so let it install and then i'll get back to that now finally the installation has uh, completed and if we do ls to list all the directories and uh, in this youtube directory you find that you have blog and you have scratch so if we open a uh, blog it is not going to work because remember we had just started installing using laravel installer but then we aborted it so that we can uh, do the, the second method that is using composer and we install now laravel inside this scratch uh, directory okay so let us go into this directory called scratch and open uh, let's go inside that scratch and open it using a visual code studio uh, that is the editor that i'm using so that i can be able to explain to you the directory structure okay so i to do that i'll just do code like that it's going to open and now here we go now from the scratch directory you can see you have a bunch of folders and files and when you're just a beginner just starting you just you get a surprise with this so all these folders you wonder what are they for and what do they do maybe how where how do i get started and i just want to tell you that uh, it's a matter of practice and it is not something hard okay anything if you can do anything if just apply a uh, practice okay so the first thing uh, let's look at um, let's look at the folder structure so as you can see the folders are arranged alphabetically they're, no they are not arranged alphabetically but they are arranged from app bootstrap config database public resources routes down up to the file webpack.net.js okay so let's get started with the, the first one it is the app let us open and see what is inside there so inside the uh, app directory we have the console subdirectory we have exceptions we have http we have models directory and we have the providers directory so let me just start with commands commands is just uh, when you want to the console i mean the console when you want to write commands you can let's let me use this example maybe you want to write to automate your application to send somebody email uh, or to send to the users email after every uh, 30 days so that command or automation you are going to write the to write inside this console okay just know that and then you have exceptions this is for handling errors the errors that uh, the, when you're working the application you have errors that will come up so handling those errors they are usually done in the exceptions directory then you have http so inside the http uh, we have now the logic inside the http is where you are going to have the logic you can call them functions for example if you are working with copy hp and you've not set up any 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 architecture you just do plain files and folders you will now call this uh, maybe the functions directory so this is where you will store all the functions for example the function of saving you to the database the function of withdrawing you of getting you from the database the functions of displaying what all those that functionality is is inside the http and then the model is everything to do with the database okay and we'll talk about that later we have the providers uh, like uh, service providers and we have many providers or services uh, well i'll talk about that later and then bootstrap is where the application starts and also it helps in uh, caching okay we'll talk about that uh, later 
then you have the config all the configurations of your application you have the database so these are the database uh, for example where i talked about the model and told you that that is the anything it deals with database but now you may ask what about this so this i can say it may be the database creation blueprint you can just call the like the database creation blueprint and i'll talk more about that when i will be covering the database then you have public so the public directory is the file you find you have index.php and this index.php is which is the file that all the requests that come to your application hit so all the requests that come to your application will hit this file first and then this file what is going to do is going to, to it is going to initialize is going to initialize let me just show you something is going to first of all load all the installed packages and make sure that they are ready after loading all the packages it is going to do what to load the application so to boot the application i told you that inside the bootstrap uh, directory is where the application boots that is why it's calling here require what bootstrap app so this the, the it requires this bootstrap and this app and this is what initializes your application now to begin with doing things okay so after that let's talk about uh, so that is the first one the second uh, purpose for the or the important the public directory is to store static uh, files for example you have java compiled javascript compiled css images and uh, images and others all the static files and you store them in public directory and then you have the resources so the resources is the view layer of your application we are going to talk about uh, mvc and you are going to you are going to understand so this is the view layer for example you have the css directory the javascript line then you have the view so anything that user sees on your website the user is able to see and interact with that is the that thing is rendered from the resources folder here okay or you can call it the front end the ui user interface part of your application and then we have the routes so the routes is everything to do with the routing of application and what are routing for example you have a you have application the core php application you have maybe the index.php about.php you have user.php contact.php so how if you, you take these you link all these files and you want it to work in a way that if the user I wants to wants to see the contact information you are going to serve what contact.php if the user wants to see maybe about you are going to serve what about the php so you carry that concept and bring it to laravel we find routes so for example let me just click web we are going to use the web browser for example if the user visits this slash this what should the user see so if the user uses this slash about, you serve what? About. But now here you will see that we are not going to serve about. There are specific files that we are going to serve. So that is the difference with the with the, the Laravel and page, the copy HP. And then you have the storage directory uh, where error logs and things like that are stored. And we are going to look at that later. Then you have test for testing. You have the vendor directory. The vendor directory is where the installed applications sit. They live there. All the application you install, they are going to be, the files are going to be in the vendor directory. And then you have the .env, that is for environmental variables. Those variables that you don't want to be exposed to, uh, to anybody, you just put them in the uh, .env, .env file. And then of course we have others here okay i can talk about this but uh, we have dot git the dealing with github we have artisan so artisan is the command is the is the is, you will use artisan so much you'll do php artisan a lot uh, many times 
and this is very important it's going to help you for example start the server for example create database migrations it's going to help you to create fun controllers and we are going to talk about all of them so don't worry about what they are and then you have pack composer.json and you understand that this contains all the information of the php packages that are installed in your application for example the package name laravel the project name Laravel, and then we have the other packages these are the packages that are installed the information about those packages that are installed and their files are in the vendor directory are found in the composer.json and another important file is the package.json so of course you are going to have the front end so maybe you can do a view front end or react front end or bootstrap front end whichever the front end you are using <coughs> you will probably install packages using npm so the information of the front end packages the packages that are installed using javascript they will be contained the information is contained in package.json okay and you can see that the files that are installed by default like axios laravel mix lodash and post css they are installed there and then after that we have the uh, we have the web we have the web webpack.mix.js so this is just for generating the static uh your static assets for example you have the for compiling not general for compiling you have that dot scss file and you want to produce css dot css file you will use what you are going to use this uh you are going to use this file a uh, webpack to to generate those uh you're going to use webpack to generate those static assets so basically that is it with the uh, that is it with the directory structure so let's talk about mvc architecture and let me just go to the to the browser and then i'll just search mvc and then hit enter and i'll go to the images let me just go to the images mvc stands for uh, for model view controller so this is where you divide your application into various parts model stands for database so anything that uh, is to do with the database handling the database creating uh, retrieving data and stuff like that is dealt with in the model and then the view is anything with display layer so how do you display this data which file are you going to serve that the user will be able to see that and then the controller this is the functionality involved the logic involves in coordinating the model and the view for example, let's say this uh, you have you have a, an application and um, and on this application you are displaying a login form what happens so the user enters the email and the password and hits hits what login so you can't log in this user without knowing if this user is first registered so after just clicking login what will happen the 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 the, the view is going back to is going to the controllers you have in this controller is all a function maybe login function whatever you want to call it but it's called to be it's going to be called a controller now and this is going to to check the database for example you can tell it check the user's database if a user with this email exists so if he exists direct him to this route or direct him or serve this file okay so it you click and then the user exists what do, will the controller do if it exists take him to the home page okay and that is you, you see the the coordination um but then let's say that the user does not exist so the you you hit login and then the login controller it checks it has the functionality to check if that user exists in that database or not so it checks the user's table and it doesn't find that email what does it do it comes back and throws an error and you display that error on the screen that 
uh, you are the, that such a user does not exist in the application uh, you have to, to register first so that is basically now uh, the model view controller that is mbc architecture so why am i explaining that i am explaining that because laravel uses that architecture it uses model uh, view controller architecture where that is the reason why you are getting all these different directories where we have uh, controllers so the controllers are the you can be like functions the functions to, that will be doing various things but now and then but in this case they are classes and then we have the so let me just explain it simply so when we apply the mvc architecture in laravel uh, the model becomes what the model becomes if you click on app we find the models so this is anything to do with the database and we have the user model for example created so this is a model uh, a model is like uh, it's like a middleman it's like a middleman between the the sql or the, the code to create or add user into the database and the and the functionalities and whatever it has various classes or various methods it is a class it has various methods of doing various operations on the user's table okay for example saving the user retrieving the user editing the user all those uh, 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 updating the user, all those uh, required uh, uh, required operations okay so that is the m part of mvc so what about c c is the controllers of the function so if i click on this http i'm going to the controllers directory and then you have the controller so this is the core controller but then you are going to create controllers here for example users controller and that users controller is the one that is going to be working with the users model to do various operations and then as now that is c what about m what about uh, view mvc what about view so view is the as i said is the display layer so that display layer is here so anything that will be displayed if you go to resources and then views anything that will be displayed is going to be inside the views dot inside the views directory so from here is where we are going to create our static files okay so from here is where we are going to create a, any front-end files or for example html file but in this time in this case we are going to use another um, another another um, another file called another uh, how can a package it's not a package template and we will be using what we call templating engine in this case we are going to use what we call templating engine so in laravel the templating engine is called blade so blade.php uh, for example you can see uh, inside the blade.php we have these uh, files and as you can see it is just html except for some commands for some things that you may not understand for example art so you may we may wonder what are they if we're just starting so that is now what that is that is now the mvc in laravel okay well so maybe now let's look at i've talked of uh, routing i've talked about it but now you may ask me so how i've not seen the laravel application so let me just show you how to serve the laravel application so that you can access it on your browser so the first thing is to go to the terminal inside the folder where that application is located and just do php artisan serve what that does is just to serve the to to start the server and it tells you that development server and then it gives you the address started so if we just go to this address let's just copy that address by doing control c and then go to the browser and inside 
this tab I'll just paste data address and hit enter and there we go we have the laravel application so what is happening here so what is happening is let me just get take you back to the code so let me it begins with routing so we go where we go to the web dot here so somebody visits this slash this so this this is like the application slash that like that like that it is showing what it is showing it it, it is the equivalent of doing just that okay so it didn't do slash contact like anything like that so it is just slash that alone now that loads what so we tell the laravel application that if somebody visits this route serve this file so in our case somebody visited slash that route slash this get it is a get route we have a get post well, you know that those http verbs if you are not familiar with them you need to to at least look at it so slash get this and it what does it do you say that return view so meaning it is telling this application that if somebody visits this route home page so it says that if somebody visits this home page uh what is that it does it instructs uh here to to send this file and this file is called welcome and where this file found and i told you that the front end of laravel is found in resources directory so i have to go to resources inside views and i can get that file here it's called welcome.blade.php so for example if i delete everything this is how it looks right now but let me just do something let me delete everything and just do a basic uh, a basic html scaffolding and just say h1 this is a new laravel application like that if i just save this by doing control s and go back and refresh you can see it gives this so this gives you assurance that uh, the file that is being served with this one okay let's say that i have another file i have about page so let me just go back to web.php and i have another route so to create a route you just do route get and then we have the slash like this and the function to handle that but of course later we are going to see that we're not going to use this function like this later you're going to see that instead of functions you're going to use controllers so like that for example let me say that i want to serve about page like that and then what happens i need to write the function to serve just do function so i just have to do a function and this function is going to do is just to return and uh, to return let me just return a text this is about page like that like that so if i just save this like that and go to the uh, here and then do slash <coughs> slash about you see now this is slash about this is just slash and then this is slash about if i go here and then do slash about in small letters and hit enter as you can see it gives what this is about page but instead of serving this we can return a file so in that file we can create it in the view directory so we just go to the view and then we can create another file in that file let's just call it about dot blade about dot blade dot php like that and hit enter and this can be just because they can just it is a blade it is a template or templating engine but you can just write html it will work so here 
you can just do about page this is about page and then now if i save that and just go to the body and do h2 and just do this is about page and then you can just do the paragraph and some scaffolding of lorem text like that and just save so if i go to the uh, if i go to to this i instead of serving to welcome to, to web.blade.php instead of returning this text i'll just return that file so i'll just do return i have already done return so return view view is the folder and then i, I have to the file the file is about so <clears throat> I know it is about.blade.php, but just call it about. Laravel is intelligent, it will know that you are talking about that about.blade.php file. So if you just save that and go back and refresh, you are going to see what it has served that page. Let's say you also have contact page. So we have application as it has contact us, it has about us, it has the home page. Okay. So we can do another one, just copy that and paste down here and let's do contact, contact like that, save it and now this you are serving contact page and that means that you have to create that page inside the view. So just go to the views and then create another file and call it contact.blade dot php like that and hit enter and just do a basic scaffolding and do what contact us and then you just do h1 contact us and then after down there just do lorem paragraph first and then lorem 100 i hope you know that it is html and then if i go here and now instead of about i just do contact contact like that and hit enter there you go it serves what contact page <coughs> So basically, that is how routing works in Laravel. So that is how you interact with the pages. So all your pages things will be inside there. You will organize them inside the views here. So inside the views here is where you are going to to organize your to organize your what you are going to organize your files here. You will know the way you can do it. For example, if you want to do admin. A directory you are going to do to have the to have the to create a domain directory here and then you can create the front end and inside that you'll put there the respective files that you want to serve when somebody visits those uh, uh, pages okay so that is the routing i think uh, i want to stop there and for this session and in the next session i'll look at uh, at model or data dealing with database then the next session look at how to deal with database thank you so much and let's meet then